Welcome to In Touch with Dr. Charles Stanley. The COVID-19 coronavirus has everyone concerned and many people hurting deeply. But believers have the capacity to maintain a godly perspective. In today's encouraging program, we'll hear Lisa Ryan's interview with Dr. Stanley. Dr. Stanley, it is such an honor to be with you here today and to hear from you. Throughout the generations, you have been such a steadfast voice of faithfulness and encouragement, and uh, especially in times of trial. And so we want to hear from our pastor today. And I was thinking about your 30 life principles and how much of an impact they have had on the lives of people who are seeking to live a life of obedience. And I was thinking of two in particular and wanted to get your response to them, uh, if you don't mind. The first is, God's Word is an immovable anchor in times of storm. And this certainly is a time of storm as we are uh, battling with this coronavirus around the world. How can God's Word be an anchor to us right now? Well, first of all, the Word of God is true. When He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, you can trust Him for that. Mm -hmm. And when He makes promises in His Word, and I think about this promise I just turned to a few moments ago. Listen to this. He says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, surely I will help you, surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And the Bible is full of wonderful promises from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And the more we saturate our mind with the truth and recall the truth of the Word of God, then the stronger we feel, the more capable we feel of facing things because we know that the God who said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, mm -hmm. we're not in this all alone. We're in this by the permissive will of God, mm -hmm. and He is still in control. Mm -hmm. What passage was that? That's Isaiah chapter 41, beginning in verse 10. Mm. That would be a, a great passage for people to write down and continue to reflect upon as an anchor and uh, we know that an anchor keeps the boat from, from tossing about too much. It keeps it tethered. And the Word of God can tether us, anchor us. And the Word also says that, that His Word is the same yesterday, Amen. today, right. and forever. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Well, the other uh, life principle I wanted to ask you about is this. Adversity is a bridge to a deeper relationship with God. And we know that in this time of adversity, it can draw believers in a closer relationship with the Lord. But how can it draw unbelievers to the Lord? Well, the way it can drive unbelievers is this. They look around and at first they try other things and they don't work. And finally, unbelievers are driven to God when they feel absolutely helpless. Mm -hmm. Nobody else they can turn to that has an answer for the problem, whatever the problem may be, whether it's a disease or a relationship or some particular need, God is always there. He's waiting for us to acknowledge our need of Him. Then it's as if He shows up. Well, He's been there all along. He waits for us to be willing to acknowledge that we need God in our lives. And I think about people uh, who naturally, normally, they don't think about God. They've got plenty of everything they want. They can do whatever they want to do, go wherever they want to go, sin all they want to sin, and it appears they're getting away with it, but they're not. Mm -hmm. Well, then as a follow-up to that, how can we as believers be a reflection of Christ in this time of crisis that would then perhaps draw unbelievers to Him? I think our confidence, mm -hmm. our sense of assurance, our expressions of that, when we talk about, no, I'm not afraid, I'm trusting God, He'll answer my prayer. He says uh, He'll give us strength when we need it. What, whatever we need, He'll provide. And I think as we go about our life trusting God, waiting upon Him, it doesn't mean we won't get sick or doesn't mean we won't have any problems, but our faith, unshakable faith, yes. is a demonstration to people who are looking for something to believe in. Mm -hmm. You know, as we are... As we are listening to the news, we hear, um, you know, words like social distancing, isolation, quarantine. 
And I'm sure that can be a trigger for many people, um, a trigger of loneliness and anxiety. A lot of people who are at home with families, I've got my husband at home, they at least have each other for some community and communication. And we were built, God created us to be in community and in relationship with with each other. But at a time like this, when we've got a lot of singles, uh, be they young singles or senior adults, what kind of uh, comfort and encouragement can you bring to them as they are dealing with real loneliness during this time of quarantine? Well, one of the first things they need to do is to get into the Word of God and begin to read. Mm-hmm. You say, well, maybe I don't understand it all. Don't worry about that. When you're hurting, God will give you understanding. Mm-hmm. He will use His Word to comfort you like nothing else can. You can hear sermons. You can hear people's encouragement. But it's when your eyes hit the truth of the Word of God, something begins to happen in your heart. And so somebody says, well, I don't know the Bible. You don't have to know the Bible. You take your Bible, open it up to the Psalms and start reading. You know, a lot of people are have a real and tangible concern about um, the loss of income uh, as, you know, businesses continue to close. People are sent home from work, people that work an hourly wage, uh, single moms that are trying to make a way for their children. How would you bring comfort to people and encourage them uh, when they are facing some very real and tangible losses from a financial standpoint? Well, the first thing I would do is I would turn to the book of Philippians and um, I would read this 19th verse of the fourth chapter. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, it's, that's marked also <laughs> because there have been times when I've had needs. Listen to that. My God will supply all your needs. And sometimes we think we don't have a particular need. We need Him first of all. And then there are other needs. He said, I'll supply all your needs according to His riches and glory. Now, somebody says, well, how do I know He's going to do this? If you'll notice, He said, according to His riches. God assumes responsibility for meeting the needs we have in our life. Also in in the Bible, it says that as a man thinketh, so is he. And we are, unfortunately, with the constant news feed, we are thinking about um, more school closings, more people contracting this virus, more restrictions, more information, negative information about the stock market. How can we renew our minds with the Word of God, and and are there other um, scriptures and passages that you would encourage us to meditate on? You mentioned Psalm 91, and that has been a particular comfort to me right now. What are some other verses that we can meditate on? Well, when I when I take the Bible and 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 begin to look through, and as you have uh, mentioned, uh, all these that I have marked, when I'm going through something that's difficult in my own life. I flip through scriptures. For example, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. Mm-hmm. And a person says, well, you know, I don't know where to turn. But if you just turn through the scriptures, remember this, that God will assume responsibility for turning you to the right book of the Bible or whatever it might be. For example, he gives strength to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Youth shall be weary and tired. The vigorous men shall stumble badly. Yet those who wait for the Lord Mm -hmm. will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is, I I can't emphasize enough. This is the most important book in the world. And right now, everybody ought to be reading the Word of God. And as as I just flipped through I have chosen you and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. And just over and over and over in the Scriptures. And so somebody says, I don't mind. This is what I hear most. I don't know how to turn. Just do what I said. Just start reading. God will turn you to what He knows you need to hear. And especially the Psalms. The Psalms are a great place to start if you don't know where to start. God is using even this circumstance, which is bad, 
for a good purpose Amen. in my life. Listen to this. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Mm. For he will give his angels charge, charge concerning over you. you. Yes. And so, we, you know, of all the things we could say, that I could say to anybody is, first and foremost, the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The awesome, powerful Word of God that changes lives. And what will happen is this. As you read the Word, your attitude will change. Right. And you'll begin to think about God in ways you never thought about. You'll begin to recognize your need of Him. And after you read it a little bit, you'll recognize, well, you know what? I believe I understand that. And, uh, In a whole new way. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Mm. Confirm for us the work of your hands. All of a sudden, the Word of God gets inside of you, and you begin to believe it and, and respond to it. What will happen? And I believe this will happen. When this is all over, this book will once again be the number one book in every household in America. One of the children in our church sent a very thoughtful question for a child, and I want to share it with you. Could this virus be God's way of making us turn from our sins and follow His commands? Absolutely, yes. How? Because first of all, we have a need that we don't have an answer for. Mm -hmm. We have to look to God. And we have needs that we can't just purchase the answer for. We have needs that we're not sure exactly what it's going to take. People are dying. People are getting sick. And so... The whole atmosphere is totally changed. And what's the answer? At this point, nobody has the answer but God. Mm -hmm. He's getting our attention. Mm -hmm. He has gotten our attention. Uh, another one of our church members asks this question. Dear Pastor, in Romans 8, 28, God promises to work all things together for the good of those who love Him. Can you give some examples of good things that God can bring out of this crisis? Well, first of all, the best thing that will come out of it is we recognize we need God. We've been so blessed in so many ways, we felt like somehow we can manage anything and everything. Now, we need God. Mm -hmm. And it isn't what we come up with or what we can discover, what we can manufacture. It is Almighty God reaching down to give those people who are scientists searching for answers, the answer is going to come from Him. And so this is why we are helplessly, totally helplessly before Almighty God. Mm -hmm. And the sooner and the quicker we turn to Him, the sooner and the quicker we'll have an answer. Yes. We're all under His canopy. And as we look to Him, trust Him, He is going to provide. My God shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus, not sometimes, all the time. Mm -hmm. We know you in this church family as a man of prayer, and many a time you have kneeled right at this altar and you have prayed for this congregation, you have prayed for our nation. We have seen you to be a man of prayer how are you praying? What are you praying during this time and during this crisis? Well, my first prayer to God is, Lord, show us what you are saying to us. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. Not just get everybody healed. God, show us what you're saying to us. And secondly, be merciful to us. Mm -hmm. Be merciful to us for people who don't know you. And then, Lord, I pray that you'll use this to bring many people, multitudes of people to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And Lord, I pray that your people will be faithful in these days as a demonstration to the unbeliever that God is faithful to his word. Mm -hmm. He keeps us in his promises. Have you seen God already beginning to answer some of the prayers that you have been petitioning in your home? Well, yes, I have, and I have seen, I've seen some things that I think, Lord, I don't quite understand this, but I'm trusting you. And then I've seen situations where God supplied needs that just weren't anywhere in sight at the time. Mm -hmm. You are loved around the world. Uh, we hear from people all over the globe that have been impacted by In Touch Ministries, that have been impacted by your teaching and who 
are changed. Their lives have been changed. But I promise you, no one loves you quite like your own church family. We love and adore you and are concerned for you. So if you don't mind, I have a couple of personal questions that our congregation has set out as well, not just biblical, not just theological. We want to know how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, people ask me that because I had E. coli twice, and uh, I'm being very careful, and I'm happy, and I'm trusting God, and I'm believing He'll take care of me, and uh, I'm blessed. I don't have any complaints about me personally, and um, I'm trying to be careful. I want to be back preaching on Sunday morning when we all get together. And we'll do it on television as much as we can. And what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity that whatever's going on when people can't go to church, we'll be there with the message of the Word of God to comfort them, assure them, encourage them mm. through it all. Mm. One of the children in our congregation asked uh, their mother, uh, does Dr. Stanley have enough food to eat? <laughs> What if his grocery store is empty like ours? Can you give this little girl some, some assurance that you have plenty of food and toilet paper? <laughs> well, I certainly can. I do have enough. Somebody says, do you live by yourself? No, Jesus and I together, so I don't feel like I'm by myself. And uh, I have enough, and I have people uh, who make sure that I do have enough, and I'm very, very grateful for that. And so I, I wouldn't want anybody to think I'm suffering in any way. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to stay healthy. We take good care of you. <laughs> um, one of the young moms in our church has submitted this question. Dr. Stanley, I love my husband. I love my kids. I can't imagine life without them. But with schools canceled, the kids at home all day, and my husband's office closed, we are cooped up in this house, and it's about to drive all of us crazy. Is there a promise in Scripture about how God can keep us, keep me, <laughs> from going crazy? <laughs> can you help this desperate mom? Well, I wouldn't suggest pills or medicine to answer that. <laughs> but I would think the father or the mother ought to get the children together and say, this is what we're going through, and we are going to read the Word of God together. We want to find out what God says about these things. And if you don't know any other place to start, start, as we said, in the book of Psalms. Yeah. I think reading the Word of God together, praying together. And parents, when your children see you on your knees talking to the Heavenly Father, they never forget it. Mm -hmm. And I can remember things that Andy and Becky had both said to me that uh, when we were going through some difficult time, just watching me get on my knees and pray and they photographed that on their mind, mm -hmm. that that was my response to difficulty and hardship. And then I would say to those parents, reading the Bible, they said, look, let's get together and read the Bible. Well, parents say, well, I know that I understand it all. Well, just find the passages that you do understand and be sure to get them to have a Bible so they can read it with you. And this may be a good time to start family devotions mm -hmm. with your family. Mm -hmm. And then... I think uh, if they have questions, then do your best answer. If you don't have an answer, then write in touch or call in touch and say, look, my kids are asking these questions. What do I say to them? And we do our best to answer those questions. Yes. Yes. And then you may have some games that you play, whether it's a Monopoly, that's an old time game I used to play, <laughs> or checkers or whatever it might be. Yeah. But uh, not those war games on TV. That, that, that's not the right one. You play. know, this could actually be a wonderful time for family and a right. real gift as families are, are forced really to come together and share quality time together. Uh, right. If the weather's good, get out and get some fresh air. Play something in the backyard. Of course, we want to uh, keep all of the precautions that we need to, but there are ways that this can be a great family time uh, while we are under some of these restrictions in our country. And especially since Father is not there a lot of times, mm -hmm. this is a time for Dad to be there, give his full attention to his children. They'll love that. You know what I saw uh, this morning in our neighborhood? One of the dads had his, his rider mower 
out and he had a little trailer on the back of it and three of his little kids <laughs> and they were riding around the neighborhood and the kids were just having a ball. And I thought, you go, dad. That is a great idea. That's right. And, uh, you know, just getting some fresh air with those kids and having some wonderful time with them. Right. Well, we of course, want to close this time uh, by asking you if you would lead us in a prayer of faith. And I know that it would be a great comfort. And though we are not all sitting here in this congregation as we are used to, uh, thankfully through technology, we are virtually all together. And right. as I mentioned earlier, together spiritually. And we would love to have you close our time together by praying for us, for the nation, and for the world. Would you lead us? I would love to. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful privilege of owning a Bible, for being able to understand the truths of your precious word, for the privilege of bringing your promises to you, calling upon you, asking you to meet our needs at this time, and believing in our hearts that you will. Father, I pray that you will bind families together at this time. There'll be new ways of looking at each other, feeling toward each other, that when this is all over, there'll be a closeness and a oneness and a unity that we've never experienced before. I pray for the churches, that people will not give up hope. They'll not think that, well, our church won't ever meet again. Just the sure people, Father, this is temporary that you will put us back together and that we'll be stronger than ever before. And we pray for the president that you'll give him wisdom and strength and fortitude and those around him will be supportive of him and that you'll give him the kind of wisdom he needs to make decisions that'll make this country step forward, and not backwards. Thank you, Lord, that you're accessible to us in every circumstance. I pray for all the pastors, Father, everywhere who are attempting meet, to meet the needs of their congregation, especially those who are sick, the dangerous places they may be challenged to walk through. Pray that you'll protect them, that they may preach messages that emphasize the truth of the Word of God. They'll be praying for their congregations, that their congregations will be praying for them and supporting them. We pray for all these physicians, God, who are putting their bodies, their life on the line for the people they're ministering to. Father, if you'll give us the privilege of just forgetting ourselves and asking not just what's best for me, but what's best for my family, what's best for the nation, what's best for my coworkers, what's best for me to walk in a godly life. And Father, I pray that we'll never be exactly the same again that we'll be a nation that has recognized literally, genuinely, our absolute and total dependence upon you for everything. May we never be as we have been. May we be a nation that acknowledges that the Lord God Jehovah is our God and that we're trusting you through these days to bring us through it and look back and recognize that it was a time of great spiritual growth in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 121. From where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Thanks for listening to today's special presentation on In Touch with Dr. Charles Stanley. You can listen again when you click today on radio at intouch.org. And to learn more about trusting God all the time with all your needs, search through the many Bible-based resources on our website. Again, that's intouch.org. I hope you'll join us again next week as we learn more about the God we can count on. That's Monday on In Touch with Dr. Charles Stanley. This program is a presentation of In Touch Ministries, Atlanta, Georgia, USA.